Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. As you know, Percy the Peacock was coming with me on holidays. Now Percy and I are on a cruise to New Zealand and I'm in the bedroom that we've got, our little stateroom at the little desk. And I've nutted out over the last three days as we coast along to New Zealand and have been th uh, three, three sea days. So I've figured out how I'm gonna do his feathers. So I just wanted to capture that because otherwise I'll just keep stitching and before I know it, that'll be all finished and you'll be like, oh, what did she do? What did she do? So let's start at the beginning. What I decided to do now, I still have my lines underneath of all of the feathers that I drew from the transfer. So I do need to get the um, hairdryer that's here. I don't have access to an iron, but I have a hairdryer and I need to heat it up to get rid of that red. But I'm a bit concerned that I'll lose all of this in the process. So I'm just gonna carry on and hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get enough heat in behind here that the red will just disappear. I think it will, I'm not too concerned. So what I've decided to do is a, a bit of a textural feather thing for Percy instead of just straight embroidery. Now I threw in this little doily with me and as you'll see around the ends, it's got this little raised crocheted flower and that caught my eye and I thought, well, that's nearly a peacock feather there. And I thought, well, let's start layering them down. And then I thought, well, I could do with more texture. So I bought with me some cheesecloth so I cut out a piece of cheesecloth and I stitched it down with invisible stitch. Then I went and cut myself out a heap of these little flowers off this doily and I've just scattered them with everything ending at the base of Percy's tail there. So I left that one unstitched so that I could show you the layers, the, the cheesecloth, then the um, little doily morsel. So I'll just pin that back on there. So I was pretty impressed with that myself. I thought, yeah, that's looking good. And I think, no, we need the feather. So then I started playing with a feather. Now the first one was this one and I actually stitched it in a cream um, gum nut yarn and I couldn't see it. So then I got a little bit braver and I added this this guy it's like a soft caramel brown and i put in three or four little stitches and i liked the way it looked so i started really playing with it now i have still got some caramel in there in the pearl cotton the gum nut wool i pulled it out because i had used the gum nut wool to create this um, feather stitch down here a fly stitch down here um, and then I ended up replacing it with this darker caramel and I much much prefer it because it really you know shows up but this is in here as a bit of a textural detail can you see see in under there there's some satin stitch and then there's two bullion stitches from the top of the bullion stitch I then couched a circle of that dark caramel just some random little fluffy feathers there and then carried on to finish the actual um, feather so then I did another one over here and underneath that little pearly uh, mother of pearl bead is a second couched circle you can see it a little bit better on that one because I drag this feather down onto this fabric in the corner then I did my two bullion stitches, a little bit of satin stitch, and then down we came with the, um, oh, gone blank, it's not feather stitch, fly stitch. Then to lift it even more, I just started beading the cream and the gold beads onto a piece of cotton, then popped them down into a semicircle to create these little loops. So, I then, as I left Brisbane, I was given a bag of crocheting cotton and in there was this really unusual thread. It's like um, 
a pearly looking thread with a, a gold filament wrapped around it it's really pretty it's a bugger to use it hates going through this thickness so I've had to find my thickest needle I can to make a nice good hole for this to slide in and I just did a couple loops and then couched them down so the plan is or oh, the other thing I did was added a bead and a sequin to the crocheted flower so if you just look at that corner that gives you a snapshot of what Percy's tail is going to be a combination of whether I think of something else to do in there possibly um, but at the moment that's the plan so what I thought I might do is show you how I did one of these feathers now where's my needles I've got different needles to do different tasks that's the biggest needle I had with me to bring that thick gold thread through so let's let's thread up and I'm hoping that I can stitch on camera for you one complete feather so then you can really see what I've been up to so I'm thinking I might do one there so the first thing I did uh, no, it wasn't that thread. I need, I need this one. Is it that one? Why is that one out then? It shouldn't be out. I'll try and keep my threads that I'm using together so that um, I don't mix them up. I had visions of doing different coloured combinations of feathers, but was nearly getting too complicated if that makes sense okay am I doing I might do it down here I've got this little area here where you will clearly see what I'm up to so the first thing I did was I made a loop for the pearl mother of pearl bee to sit in so it was just a case of create loop, then come back on myself with a bit of couching over it to hold the loop into position. Now I haven't worked out what I'm going to do in the way of the feather stem for these guys. That's yet to be nutted out. So whether I can find a dark wool or I feel like it needs to be quite a chunky fibre, whatever I do choose, just to sort of give it, you know, a little bit of depth to it because the crocheting is so heavy. So that was the first thing. I made a loop. Then I filled in the bottom half of that loop with some stitches just to put a little bit more of that color of thread in there and then I got myself a pearl which I do at the end not so much now otherwise your thread is catching on your little bead all right so I filled in the center there does that make sense so the little pearl will sit in that space then I had thread left so the theory was to create a bullion stitch up the side of that circle and then at the top of the bullion stitch once it's in position I started a second circle in the dark caramel I was literally sitting in the library on the ship just fiddling around with this and then I sort of ended up back in the room and my husband wanted to have a an afternoon kip and this feather was still in my brain I'm like no I'm not quite quite happy with it yet so that's when this bullion knots came into play and a second ring now at the end of the day it's going to get quite messy with all of these feathery stitches which is I'm okay with because the more layers and the more interest I've got in there I think the better his plumage will look 
probably should concentrate. That's too many wraps probably. So, you know, maybe the person that views this will miss half of the work that I've put into it because there'll be probably too much going on, which is typical of embroidery, isn't it? So I've now got two bullion stitches either side of that circle. Does that make sense? And now I'll just end off this thread. And that was the end of that color. So it's ever so subtle. And the little pearl sits in that gap. So let's do that end off. And I'll re-thread in the caramel. I think I've got a yarn at home that's like a natural tone. It's not a it's not a twine, but sort of those colours. So I'm thinking if I can couch or even fly stitch some of that into the piece and that'll connect these little crocheted medallions to his back so what I did now is where that bullion stitch ended I brought my needle up there and I did another loop going back down just as that additional ring around the top of the feather whoops and I sort of just fiddled with it until I felt like I had a, the right shape and then came back and couched it down. Which brings me to the other side of the loop, which, and then I was like, well, what do I do now? How do I get back into the body of the feathers? And that's how the fly stitch sort of got me where I needed to be next. So he's got his little. So I had even thoughts at the top of this semicircle I could do some more little stitches. And I'm, you know, at the end of the day, that could possibly happen. But I think I had enough on my plate with what I'd planned here. I thought if I get too far ahead of myself, so then I came down and I did the first stitch to start the trek back. And then I then dropped in a couple little additional sort of soft little feathery things here. Got a few photos in my phone of peacock feathers. And there's like all these little feathery bits everywhere. Not that you're really gonna see them with the texture that I've created here for myself gonna run out of thread so there was six little stitches leading back up to that bullion stitch I tried my hardest to get a gap between them so that the eye would even notice them but that wasn't the easiest and I'm running out of thread so I'll probably only get one fly stitch in I'll run out of thread but that's okay because I'm bumping into a medallion so maybe that's the best I need I'd say that is all I'm going to need because here's another feather I debated too do I start at his bottom and work out or do I start at the tail and work up to his bottom so I spent a few hours mulling that around in my head, the construction of feathers, and I decided to work back. I don't know if it's the right decision, but I sort of felt like I could come so far and then stop and then pick up again and stop, you know, and I've got solid stitches as well as lighter stitches. Oh, look, I have worked out the medallion. Look, I've just looked at my piece and I have, that's what this other cotton, is about gee that's so impressive that I had even not seen it so that concerns me but yeah I have so I, uh, yeah do I leave it do I keep it do I redo it 
now that I'm looking at it I can see it and I do like it because it's subtle it's tricky isn't it because I think um, yeah, see I did toss around bringing in a thicker thread maybe I need um, still a thicker thread I, I don't know nothing like a uncharted territory is there I need a, my beading needle what do I do with it well, it's sitting over on the couch behind me it's not in the couch it's in a piece of work hang on a minute yep I got it um, at the moment I do like it because it's subtle but I didn't even notice it I did it a day ago have already forgotten and I need my thread I need my cotton too hmm it does concern me that I'm not seeing it immediately even just chatting to you I didn't see it so is it too subtle or is the darker chocolate feather that I'm actually stitching with the pearl in it enough and that's behind you know what I mean maybe putting a thicker woolen thread in there to connect these crochet is the wrong thing to do because it might overpower might overpower the actual stitched feathers that I am doing I don't know the fun of figuring out a design I've got time I'm going to keep keep stitching what I've got so far and um, yeah see how I go maybe I get the thicker thread that it is at home oh now I've caught it oh it won't matter because it's be a bit extra strength to hold this little pearly button in yeah maybe I add some that's too big it's overpowering the feather who would have thought so much thought goes into this business of slow stitch collaging that's got a good shape about it I like that one still pretty big but I do like its shape better so now I'm just going to settle that little mother of pearl random bead I pick them up at spotlight so Aussie girls if you're looking for some little pebbles they were at spotlight our local haberdashery supply place so that's all I did was I then stitched this little mother of pearl morsel in and that finishes one feather on our friend Percy so let's have a closer look here we go and there is the plan of attack It'll be just a case of slowly working my way through. Where can I put another loop? I might, um, how are we going for time? Because what I'll do is I'll be filming this, putting it into storage, so to speak, doing some more on Percy and then coming back with maybe the feathers all stitched. I'm not sure. I'm very tempted to go off in another tangent and start working on that balustrading or you know Percy himself but I think I need to stay focused on the feathers get that whole piece done because it's going to set the tone for everything else otherwise I'm going to get end up being too far ahead of myself now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a ringlet of beads next So I'm just sort of anchoring it off and we'll do gold 
So this is all I did was just pick up a heap of gold little beads. I didn't count them, I sort of just kept going until I sort of felt like I had enough. Yeah, once I got Percy's feathers to the point that you saw at the beginning of the video, I just wanted to power on. I said to my husband, I really need to just stop and get this little bit of video made. Otherwise, I'd be so far ahead. I can feel the ship rocking. Is the camera rocking for you guys? No. It is a little. I'm so sorry. Is that annoying? But I'm trying to thread these beads onto this very thin needle and I can actually feel the ship rocking a little bit. So I hope I'm not putting up a bad video quality because of that. So that is what I did with the beads. I just created a little string of them. Oops. The light's dropping too. We're getting to the end of the day and our room is on the western side today as we're leaving Australia and I'm sort of getting quite good light more so than in the morning so I thought if I'm going to quickly do a Percy video I better I better get it done okay so it's just now coming with a few little stitches to hold down those beads open enough so that it looks like a little loop and whether I come and put some additional stitches at the base of them to make them look like feathers I, I don't know I haven't got that far yet at the moment they're just little loops popping out in amongst the crocheted feathers and then the embroidered feathers so there's a bit of a combination of things happening here layers texture thought it's the only way I'm going to be able to build up that thickness that I sort of wanted for his plumage was to start adding layers hence the cheesecloth went down and then the doily and then the embroidered feather and then the beads so I hope I'm on the right path I think I am I think yeah I think I am I had thought about seed stitching all around here in the background but I haven't yet I can't decide I might just do an overcast stitch along that raw edge. Now, in addition, while I was waiting for a moment to film, I've started doing just some running stitch through with the colors that Percy is, just toning this all down with lots of stitches. So it's been a great piece to have because if I just want to do a little bit of stitching and I've got an hour to kill, I just take that with me out onto the ship, find a comfy chair, a nice pina colada and away I go so that's the plan so there you go you're now up to speed with Percy yeah I think I think I'm on the right track I did unpick all of the wool that was in there it just blended it was the wrong color and I don't have a really dark color with me I'll show you the color it was this one as you can see it's it's just blah it's not dark enough. I've got to be braver and go a little bit heavier in my colours. I did have this chocolate out at one point, but I yeah, haven't haven't used it. I don't think it's the right colour. All right, guys. I might leave the video there, and I will tack on to the end of this video the tail completed, which may or may not happen on this cruise. We'll see how time permits. Um, if not, I can do it back in Australia and away we go. All right, guys, I will leave you alone now. And in a minute or a second or two, the finished feathers will pop up. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hello, everyone. I'm back and I have finished our peacock's tail. I didn't really change too much from the first section of the video. I just repeated. Everything seemed to flow okay. It all sort of fit so I felt like I really didn't need to add anything extra 
which was probably my only sort of thought. I feel like I've got enough detail in there. I feel like I've got the fullness that a peacock tail would sort of feel like. It has brought it forward on the background, which is what I wanted to achieve. So I'll bring it up to the camera and it's just lots of beads, little peacocky stitches used, peacocky stitches, that's not even a, a term. The shape of stitches to create that peacock feather, tapered it right in. Um, I still left the thread color to join the little piece of um, crocheted doily like the the stitches needed to make it look like a feather is what I'm trying to say I didn't change it even though I had forgotten I'd done it and hadn't noticed it I sort of liked it in the end because it was subtle and it blended I think if I think about any threads that I may have at home that I could use I think they might be stronger if anything not paler like I had started so I just kept on my merry way and I'm really really happy with it so I've been thinking a lot about the peacock itself I got rid of the red pen it um, was underneath the cheesecloth and I didn't have an iron there's not one in the cabin with me on the cruise ship and I pretty much was left just with a hairdryer and it worked perfectly I just covered the bits that I definitely didn't want heat to hit and just use the hairdryer to slowly work over the piece. It did switch off a few times because obviously it's got an overheat function on it. So it didn't take much for it to switch off. So I just left it the next day, did a little bit more, a little bit more. And I also put a bit of heat from the back of the piece forward and it worked, worked a treat. So as for the body of the peacock, I hope you've got enough light. It is a little bit dull. I'm working on insipid light that's in the cabin. I have pulled this little desk out um, when I filmed my last video for the Roxy Journal of Stitchery, the mirror was directly in front of me. Now I've pulled it out from the wall into the little gap between the couch and the opposite wall. And I'm looking directly at the ocean. I'll show you. I'll see if I can turn that without it falling off the tripod. Can you see the ocean? There you go. That's my view. So it's a bit of a dreary day. So there's not a lot of light there to uh, assist me but I think it'll be enough soon I'll be home and we can sort of have a I guess a good view then but it's not too bad I'm trying to look through the top of the camera but I think we're okay now focus Corinne um, I've been thinking a lot about his body I'm pretty sure I'm just going to satin stitch running stitch his actual body I'm gonna keep it real simple because I want to make his feathers of his tail and his wing the feature the actual wing I have a feeling I want to use ribbons in here long satiny ribbons to do those big feathers but I don't have them with me so I'm gonna to have to leave that and I think the top of his wing right at the the hinge I want to use beads but I can't put those into position until I get those satin ribbons in because I'd like the beads to come down over the top of the ribbons so ribbons first then the shoulder of beads um, I haven't thought too much about the railing and the flower there because I do want to decide what happens over here which dictates what will happen here so I want to go through all of the bits and pieces that I bought with me have a bit of a rummage and a bit of a play and try and work out what happens here because I think that'll set the tone for the rest of it if that makes sense so when I packed for the trip I'll just move him over a bit I put together a selection of goodies that I thought may be of use on anything I could possibly want to do so these are some pieces that little packs I bought. I showed them in an Etsy video a little while back. I just then put in some morsels of bits and pieces because I really didn't know what I was going to do. So I'm just gonna unpack it a little bit and have a little look. So I've got some little pieces from the Henrik, the Henrik project, and then some general textiles I don't think I need a piece of calico and my book I don't think I need any of that I don't think that suits 
I had a feeling when I left and packed, I had a real lemony tones in my head. So I put in these little pieces that I had and there were some little napkins and a doily, but that hasn't really inspired me now that I'm here. But I reckon if I had have done this piece 13 days ago, I probably would have gone down the lemon part, but I haven't. That's connected to a Roxy piece, but I'm not using the pink in it. So I thought I'll just pop it in. That's where I got my rabbit from. Just, I don't know, some random pieces of fabric. Nothing jumping out at me yet. I was thinking I'd get some background pieces made, you know, just lay down some neutrals, just get some things stitched. And I haven't really had time for that other than the one I did do and the Roxy. What's on this side? Some more of that more of that let's pull it this is the pile of lace i picked up so let's have a quick i think they're the wrong colors yeah see that's too lemony that's a bit bright no probably could have used that for the lay uh, for the wing but it's a bit too lemon I think I want something more creamy and creamy colours and maybe a bit of white or I don't know. This what have we got in here? A bit of everything. No pinks. Oh hello. That's got potential. Okay. Let's get this back into there and into the no good to me and that. Okay. So we've got a motif that's been cut out of a bigger motif. So we do have some raw edges here that need to be dealt with because that could potentially unravel. But the rest of it with a little stitch here and there, I pretty confident I could make it secure. I do like these flowers. They've got potential because you know this vine here, I had thought of cutting out little circles of fabric and then put a little French knot in them. But after I sketched and I felt like they might be a little bit overpowering, so they'd have to be really, really small. So I sort of stopped thinking about that idea. But I do like how this is a bit three-dimensional and it's got pearls in it because that would probably give me that floral feel that I had in mind over here. So how are we going to do this? We need to... That would fit. And maybe... Maybe we can layer some things. What else do we have with this? So we've got some lace with lots of scallops and shapes. That's got potential very old fragile doily with some little shapes in it so it's all broken and come away it's been washed so many times it's actually disintegrating a little bit of white cheesecloth I sort of just pinned it together and popped it in the maybe useful pile that's the corner of, of a handkerchief got some little doily morsels the other thing I need to think about, I'll put them up the top too, I think they're still in shot, is how we connect this to the bird. So we could probably, oh here's some little half pieces, probably do with, that's an interesting shape. I think the captain's about to announce something. Did you hear the bing bong? Oh no. It is the captain. Oh, he's talking about the weather, so that's all good. As long as he's not talking about, get your stuff together, Corinne, get off the boat. So we're on our way back to Brisbane. So we've got three days of sailing and then we dock on the Monday. So it's Thursday today. No, it's Friday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday on the water. Monday morning we're back into port. So we've got plenty of time for stitching. There'll be no, no distractions. 
That's an interesting shape. So I've got a bit of tulle. Yeah, he's just talking about the waves, you know, how many kilometers an hour or knots an hour we're sailing. So I've got a bit of tatting, some old lace and lots of doilies. Okay. You probably can't hear him anyway. Okay. I should send him a message. He's interrupting us. Now, I might, let's have a look for something that suits in here that connects the tail feathers to the body of the bird. That's an option. That's too big. What about this? This is an unusual shape. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it looks like in the camera, but maybe that way. It's a bit shorter, the cut. I probably could trim it anyway. I like that. Where's my pins? Well, that was simple. I am covering a little bit of embroidery there, but I'm not too worried. I think there's enough embroidery in the piece to know and I could probably do something a bit tricky in the center of that so I think that's a definite let's have a look at this motif on the side now I sort of feel like sort of feel like I could build up some layers so maybe I find a little doily where are all the doilies No. Sort of feel like I've got a gap here that could, that's a bit overpowering. No, I use that one all the time. That's a, just a white version of the same. That doesn't suit. No. Too big. There's another one. That's a better size. Looks like it's been cut out of a bigger piece. So don't want to cover that little detail up but I do want to connect things a little bit now I've got this little raw edge here that probably needs to be disguised a little maybe one of these yeah I like that and if I stitch down there that will secure that. That hides that cut edge with that. I like that. Now, how else can we add some layers? What about we tuck that into there? So the doilies are sort of in front and behind. There's one more. Maybe we can pop that into there. Sort of have that flower nestled on it yeah I like that I do need to do something down here because it's cut that's wrong I've got another little doily center not really unless I cut something Where's the original doily from the the tail feathers? Now I sort of feel like that's part of the bird, not part of the landscape. So I'm not going to use that. I wonder if we can nibble. Is there nothing else? No, that's too white. I'm sort of looking at colour. There's another one. That does work in our colour scheme, but it's sort of, no, it feels like it's too much. I sort of feel like I need something small. It sort of feels like that's a completely different colour. Yeah, I'm not, not, thinking that is any good. What else have we got? I don't think I've got much else with me. It's a shame that one flower, where did it get to? It's 
maybe maybe I'm going to take that out uh, if I was to cut that out what would that do no maybe I just don't have the right piece shame that flower wasn't the right color but if that was a softer it's very white it probably doesn't show up on the camera but it's I could probably tea stain it and I could probably do that on the ship to be honest I wonder I wonder if it would take the color should we give it a go tea stain it because I sort of don't mind it mind it blends with the the shininess but uh, I don't know not convinced I should be walking around the ship with a flower in a cup of tea I've tried to find some like-minded folks usually I find heaps I've seen I've seen one lady sitting at the pool crocheting with another lady reading a book and then in the theater before a show started a lady was um doing some crazy patchwork of all things so I said to my husband you know I've got to go and say hello and see if there's a gang somewhere but she wasn't very receptive to me and you know picture this she's sitting there with her husband waiting for a movie to start or whatever it was we were watching and randomly in the dark on her hands and knees pops up this lady in front of her saying hi would you like to hang out with me and do some needlework Where's a good spot? I haven't found a good spot. Do you know of a good spot? She deadpan looked at me and said, no, nah, I don't really know of anywhere. Husband's looking at me like, you lot are crazy. So I sort of took my, took my cue. Is that tacky putting a bow on? I sort of like the colors. Is that odd? Does it look like we've got a bunch of flowers then? Oh. I don't mind that guys it does give it a bit of a three-dimensional feel doesn't it that's random don't even know why it's in the box of goodies I must have had it on the desk and just threw it in or it was mixed up so yeah she wasn't very receptive to my advances <laughs> so I haven't been able to form a gang I have not been able to um, create a posse of stitches like-minded stitching folk it's a bit disappointed oh well I've just had to do my own thing it's all good I did chat to a few folk on um, you know tours when you go out for the day and that and um, a couple people told me their hobbies and that and we're all sort of similar so that was lovely but certainly didn't didn't form a gang which I have done in the past but having said that we did have a class of knitting that pulled us together to start with so the ship sort of gathered us and then from there we just all agreed you know to meet if we wanted to stay because one hour went so quickly I think that's how it came to be as well one hour went so quickly that we just sat there with our coffee and just kept chatting and hanging out so that's sort of how the gang started but unfortunately it's harder to whip around the boat find like-minded people convince them to hang out with you <laughs> I must sound like a lunatic I must we're gonna have to organize a cruise where it's just all of us so we just have complete control over the whole boat I think that's a better idea there we go I'm happy with that I really feel like our little man is just being absorbed by a flush of floral I like all the different textures I need to do a little bit more um, boro or camphor style stitching running stitch through here just to mimic that I need to do a little bit over here and in there along here so there's plenty for me to go on with and then when I get back, I don't think I'm going to need that. I 
could consider using the center of this doily as his tail feather too. To keep it all together, I might just cut it out because I sort of, now that I look at it again, where will we cut it? We might go wide, we can always bring it back. I'm going to take it out, try it. I think it'll merge well in with the other side of the piece anyway, so I'm not too worried about it not being used. I would say I can tuck it somewhere as a little medallion. So pretty. These must be mass produced because I've ended up finding three or four of them around the place. It's sort of a bit big. It doesn't have the right shape as this piece does. And that piece really matches the cheesecloth nicely. So I don't think that's the right. I'm gonna stay with this one. I could even do it square on. But I do like it like that. I just need to trim it back a little bit so it's not so taking over the space. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's that's going to stay there. And this little guy maybe we can work him in somewhere. Don't know, maybe we don't need him. He's a bit lost. Maybe he just goes up there, just as another layer. I'll pin him there. I'll have to think about him. I'm not crazy about him. That's all right. I don't want to lose him either. All right. I think we can pop all these lacy bits back. I think I'm off, off and away again. I will stitch all this down. I will stitch the peacock and I'm thinking it'll be one of these colors. That's too pale, it'd disappear. This is the darker one. I suspect that's the one I'll use to be honest or I go more of a golden colour. I think even that will blend a bit too much with the background. I've got to be a little bit brave. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, 840. The camera's rocking a bit. The boat started rocking a bit, so I do apologise. All right. I think that's the plan. I will let you go now because I think um, the boat's going to start rocking a little bit. So I better quit while I'm ahead, but I've got plenty to work on with there. Yeah, I really like this. This this will be, I think it's coming together. As long as I can pull off the face of the bird and it looks real, that's the, <laughs> that's the key to it all. I love how I've got a worn little bit here too. It's just such an interesting piece of, of quilt. All right, guys, I will leave it at that. I will link this bit to the first bit join it together so you've got your full episode of Percy and in the next video I would say I'll be back in my craft room because I I think I'll want to do this wing or I'll be back in a day or so because I do have three days of sailing and maybe I've got enough goodies here that I can plan this out and do a bit of stitching here so we'll see we'll see you in the next video either way bye for now